Did you know it's actually illegal in several US states to refrain from bellowing a loud and hearty YOU SUCK along to Kurt Angle's entrance theme whenever you attend a WWE event. Other laws include the mandatory consumption of New Day pancakes if offered, the obligatory flaming of arms for Finn Balor, and the rule that security can eject you quicker than Enzo Amore's at Survivor Series if you bring a beach ball because you're an arsehole. Of course, that's all utter nonsense, but it's okay. Everyone's safe because no fan can resist chanting YOU SUCK as Angle makes his way down to the ring anyway. Hell, even the man himself encourages the mocking by waving his arms like he's conducting a bloody choir. These days, YOU SUCK has somehow become a way of expressing appreciation for Kurt and his accomplishments. However, there was a time where WWE wanted to move away from it and focus on Kurt becoming a wrestling machine. Ask the man what he thinks about it and he's likely to roll his eyes and say it sucked. With that in mind, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and these are seven wrestlers who hated their own theme songs. Number seven, Shelton Benjamin. Right, before we get into this, we obviously can't play the themes because otherwise Otherwise, the bloody YouTube police would be on my ass. So instead, I'm gonna recreate them with my trusty keyboard, and no one will be able to tell the difference. Check it out. Anyway, on Twitter, Shelton revealed he is no fan of his current entrance theme, Set It Off, which goes a little something like this. It's the kind of song you'd expect to accompany a diva search competitor walking to the ring 15 years ago. Not now, Jerry. One thing is for damn sure, it's no, ain't no stopping me, no! It's kind of no wonder Benjamin doesn't like it. It doesn't capture his veteran status or sound menacing whatsoever. It's total half assed background music at best. Although saying that, it might work well for someone else, just not Shelton. Maybe this chump. He needs a more threatening sound to back up his swish skills between the ropes. Swish. For a guy who was once called the gold standard, this is piss poor fair. Number six, Caitlin. Oh, actually, I haven't heard this one. One second. <laughs> Let's go hit the dance floor party all night long. Let's go cut the groove, show that we belong. Caitlyn accidentally revealed on Twitter just how much she hated Let's Go, and I can hardly blame her, to be honest. But note the word accidentally. We were never supposed to find out that this diva couldn't stomach her supposed jam. She meant to send a DM to somebody, but instead posted her thoughts for the whole world to read. You know, like when you accidentally post a Facebook status instead of a Google search. Like, I don't know. Yeah, best not go there. Part of the tweet read, I just hate the generic music they have for me. Later, that got deleted and she posted, Oh snap, you stop reading my DMs. Ha <laughs> ha, I accidentally posted a message meant for a DM. Ha <laughs> ha She needn't have worried. Literally anyone with ears would have agreed that Caitlyn's theme was an absolute abomination. This thing sounds like a bargain bin version of Destiny's Child. Oh, by the way, I'm the Beyonce of Adams at What Culture. Quite how this was supposed to get anybody, including Caitlyn, excited about her appearances or matches is anyone's guess. Number five, MVP. I'm sorry, but any song that allows you to enter via your own inflatable tunnel is all right in my book. Up until now, I've agreed that the songs for Shelton Benjamin and Caitlyn were horrible, but I just can't see eye to eye with Montel Vontavious Porter on this one. I'm Coming was a total tune. It fit his big, bald, flashy sports megastar gimmick to a T. Fight me, MVP. Everything from the clock ticking intro to the quick blast of the song's title worked to treat. Porter didn't feel the same way though. He said in a 2018 interview with Chris Van Vliet that he had to pretend to like the song so as not to irk Vince McMahon. That had to be soul destroying for someone who dreamed about hitting the big time. Just imagine the predicament MVP was in when McMahon called him out into the arena, demanded the production staff play his theme, and then started unrhythmically jiving around like the coolest cat in the room. After that, all Montel could say was that he liked the song. I mean, what else was he going to say? However, on this occasion, <sighs> Vinnie Mac was right. Number four, Cesaro. 
The bar's current theme is a sort of lazy amalgamation of the first few bars of Cesaro's song before Sheamus' song takes over. Cesaro asked WWE's music grunts to come up with something James Bondish, and they came back with Swiss Made. I miss Jim Johnston. It is sort of like James Bond if the legendary English spy was whacked out on crack and decided to join Swedish metal as Meshuggah. I don't know why, but it sort of reminds me of dial-up internet from back in the day. During a 2016 chat with ESPN, he admitted he'd wished for a new song ever since WWE gave him this one. Ouch. The only saving grace is it's a slight improvement over the ill-fitting Swiss rap he used towards the start of his run. That, which just so happened to recycle Dean Malenko's old entrance theme, was... Utter bollocks. If nothing else, Swiss Made is... striking? Number three, Samoa Joe. You can thank Samoa Joe's stubbornness for the entrance theme destroyer that he has now. Nailed it. Had he not spoken up to Triple H about how much he disliked WWE's first draft, that song might not have happened. Praise that hard-headedness because it saved everyone on the main roster from hearing Taking It Back from blaring on the speakers. Akin to the, can we call it a drop on X Factor's theme? Yo, you're dealing with the X Factor. It doesn't even seem real when you think about how menacing his current theme is. In fact, it's so unbelievable that they think it's appropriate for Joe that I want you to pause this video, go away, have a listen to it, and come back. What the hell, right? The foreboding first two bars are there, but then the whole thing descends into a jingle that fits low-budget 70s porn, apparently. If Samoa Joe was Mike Awesome Fat Chick Thriller, then WWE staff might have been onto something. Nice. He isn't, and so Joe believed that this mid-90s era PS1 menu music had to go. The Samoan said on Talk Is Jericho a few years ago that the game was actually very accommodating and went out of his way to find Joe a track that he'd like walking out to. Oh, and then they accidentally played the wrong thing when Joe won the title at TakeOver Toronto, and no one bloody knew what was going on. Number two, Randy Orton. After breaking out on his own from the warm bosom of evolution, is this all right? Randy suffered through four full years of hearing Mercy Drive's Burn In My Light play him to the ring. To be honest, I quite liked it. It didn't exactly suit Orton's later Viper character, but he wasn't that guy at first. He was an entitled, spoiled, legend-smashing young brat who believed his own hype. In a 2008 interview with Game Daily, though, Randy Orton slaughtered the thing, saying he'd hated it from the first day he heard it. Although, this is a man who fingers ears for a living. Hearing it, it's no accident that Randy's music soon changed to the much darker voices. The mad bastard. He'd gone to both Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn, pleaded his case, and didn't give up until they relented and gave him new music. Number one, Kurt Angle. Remember when wrestling machine Kurt Angle got posted to the new ECW brand in 2006? Presumably to add some legitimacy to the roster considering they had this guy at the time. Putting him on ECW was fine. Trying to muck around with his established WWE entrance theme was not. Still, the company tried their best to mask a few key bars from the track and stop fans from chanting, You suck! You can't remove the You suck! We all know the You suck! We all like the You suck! It's like replacing Austin's glass smashing with a polite knock, you idiots. In a Facebook Q&A session last summer, Angle concurred with the opinion of one fan who said that the song was... Oh yeah, it was crap. It was a crap song. Whoever was responsible... You suck. He said Creative had wanted to make his tune more hardcore. How's this for hardcore creative? Or uh, how's this for hardcore? In fact, you want to see some hardcore? I'll give you hardcore! And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Let me know in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you can check out some more of our recent videos here. And check out our new podcast by searching for What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes or Spotify. Thanks for watching. I've been Adam from What Culture, and I'll see you soon.